Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, via Zoom today is... Miss Matthew uh, Spooner Haas. It's a great name. Mm -hmm. It's better than Forker. Yeah, I I was going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) Or Knifer. Yeah. Matthew Forker <laughs> could always, you could always be Sporker yeah that's true yeah. <laughs> got Spork yeah <laughs> multi-uses you know you can be both a mm-hmm. yep yeah, Spork is the greatest invention it yeah. goes good with like fruit salads like at school lunch like cafeterias yeah they used to have like a thing of like fruit salad you just take the Spork and jam it into like the pineapple or a grape or whatever yeah Good stuff. It's the greatest invention in the 20th century, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Computers and all that other shit, whatever. The sport. Yeah. <laughs> what, okay. Spaceships and <laughs> satellites and the internet and like real fast trains and airplanes and, you know, nanotechnology. Nah, vaccines. What well, everyone hates vaccines now, but you know. Anyway, um. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, I read online that uh, speaking of vaccines, somebody was saying that uh, you know Jesus didn't need vaccines. Oh, okay. That's what well, they said. So, yep. um, yeah. And then somebody uh, pointed out that maybe he wouldn't have died from the rusty nails on the cross if he. Uh, Oh, oh god wow <laughs> I was like wow that was dark <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> uh, wow <laughs> oh boy that was yeah a little bit much uh, a little dark i was like whoa a little direct plus back then i'm not sure if nails were even i, I know i'm missing the point but i know yeah, the but point. still <laughs> but yeah uh, wow. jesus literally anyway so um the uh <laughs> Today on the show, uh, we are covering the season finale of season six of Legends of Tomorrow, um, the CWDC show. Um, This aired on September 5th of 2021. Um, It was uh, directed by David A. Geddes, um, written by uh, Kido Shimuzu, Shimuzu, I'm sorry. Um, and James Egan. It was titled "The Fungus Among Us." Great, <laughs> great title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, what did you think of this episode, Matt? First off, it was uh, really good. Um, it was as far as finales go. I'd say it's probably up there with. Um, no, season five's finale, actually. Um, yeah. That was really... Last season was really good with the whole uh, Fates, you know, that whole thing with um, um, Clotho and all the other Fates. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I really liked it. Uh, it was really emotional. Um, legend, this whole season's been very interesting. Uh, it's been very dark at times, especially with the whole Constantine arc. Yeah. Um, but it's just been very, like, <clears throat> one of the things I've noticed, too, about uh, the last few seasons of, of Legends, actually, is that, like, they, no one really wears, like, their, quote, uniforms anymore. Like, they're just, like, people now. Yeah. Like, if you watch some of the early seasons, like, Sarah's always wearing, like, her white um, canary outfit and, yeah. you know, very, very superhero type of thing and like they just kind of like dispensed with that like three seasons ago <laughs> like they just wear like regular clothes like you know um yeah like so, i think i think yeah. the last time we even had anybody really wearing costumes was when uh like like when, when we had uh what's her name on it um oh, shoot Maisie richardson's character first character the um uh 
Are you talking about <clears throat> Amaya? Yeah, Amaya. There we oh, go. I, I was hey. trying to remember her name. Yeah. Yeah, when, when she was probably the first one. I mean, the last one to, like, wear a costume for a little bit. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I liked it. It was long story short. Yeah, it was it was a really good episode. So, what happened in this episode, Matt? Um, <clears throat> well, going after last episode, um, Bishop basically wants to take revenge on Earth because you know they they wouldn't let him save Earth after how many centuries? So now he's just gonna destroy it out of you know just punishment, petty petty tyrant type of move. So. Um, the it turned out that the um the fountain of Imperium was actually like like its own alien life form and was protecting Earth from alien invasions. But then Bishop um had tricked John into destroying it, or at least weakening it, so that all the aliens can now just just invade Earth. And you had those um. I forgot the name of those that that race of aliens. They're really, really like aggressive and fast. They could just like conquer like a world within like minutes. Like just um, was it uh, Zargaron? Yeah, Zargaron. Yeah, yeah. So they start. Um, they start. You know, trying to colonize or Zagaron, whatever that is. I don't know how you. Yeah, it. yeah. I think it's Zagaron. Yeah. Yeah. They start colonizing Earth pretty much immediately, and um, and Spooners. She's still kind of out cold from. You know, essentially kind of being like in a state of limbo because her child self, you know, went into the the fountain originally, which is what transported her into a different um, time period. But then now that the, the, the fountain is dying, that means that, you know, current Spooner is dying. Then it becomes like one of those weird time loop things where it's like, well, was it always supposed to happen this way? Because... You know what I mean? Like, she was... Yeah. You know, so you never know, like, with those kind of things. It's like, it just becomes a time loop. So, you know, so does that mean this whole thing, this whole scenario already happened? Like, they're just replaying it, you know? And, like, the whole thing, like, the battle and everything. So, um... Well, I'm gonna so contact... To, like, I'm gonna contact the person that invented the spork. Okay, yeah. See, <laughs> yeah. see, see if they can invent... A time machine, because I mean that's the next logical step, right? After you invent the spork, you invent oh, a time machine, yeah. right? It's the spork. It's the spork to time machine pipeline. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it's <laughs> so they're they're trying to keep Spooner alive, or just you know like letting her rest and stuff. And uh, as far as we know, John is um, is dead. But then Bayard gets the idea. Like, wait a minute. You know, he thinks John is in like a mushroom that he found and that John wants to talk to them. So they think he's just like being high, like usual, you know. And he's like, no, like I really think John's in here that he wants to speak to us. <laughs> so then it just becomes this weird thing of like, all right, should we really, you know, eat this or, or whatever, you know? And then, um, Sarah ends up doing it, even though she was the one that actually didn't really want to do it. She just took a little bite off the mushroom, and then she meets John in like this kind of like spirit realm or whatever, and he's just like kind of, you know, like apologizing, you know, like a little bit for like what he did, and he he like he knows the secret of how they can, you know, how they can fix things, and then he whispers, "I love this scene." He whispers something in there, her ear. And then she's like, looks all like dumbfounded. And then she comes back and he's like, John just told me a secret. Like, it's going to fix everything. And they're like, what? And she's like, he said, we're all connected. <laughs> they're like, really? It's like, oh, it sounded way more profound in there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, kind of, kind of like, whoa, man, we're all connected. You know? Yeah. Like, when you're high, it's, like, it's such a deep thought, like, oh, man. Then, like, later on, when you're sober, you're like, really? That was okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so basically, we end up having, having you know, like, Bishop had stolen uh, Kayla's ship. And, uh, Mick saved the last egg, which was good. Um, so, um... 
what, what's happening next here, Matt? <clears throat> um, yeah, Mick. Yeah, Mick saves the egg. Um, I forgot what he's doing. I know that Bishop is. Um, he uh, is he working with someone? I know that he's pretty much unleashed all the Zagravots. So they're trying to. Um, they're trying to ward them off, and then they get the idea. Um, before, because I think they killed off some of them, and then uh, they had some time to spare. So then they had the idea, like, you know, if this is like the last day on Earth that that Sarah and um, and Ava are just gonna get married that day. So like, they literally plan a wedding, and like, you know, get chair. The chairs were involved somehow. Um, I'm not sure where they got the chairs from, but um, yeah, they had time to get the chairs. Yep. Yeah, they had time to bake chairs, even. Let's say that. Um, mm-hmm. Just good old fashioned woodworking, you know. They made chairs. They got a cake, I think. Uh, unless, <clears> Gid- <throat> unless Gideon produced them, but no, they. Uh... Oh, Gideon. Well, no, because they stuck the ship, though, didn't they? Um, no, they stole Kayla's ship, not. Uh... Oh, they stole Kayla's ship. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, Gideon may have probably did that. Um, <clears throat> they, um, yeah, they, they had an altar. Um, Someone, I think it was Nate, officiated because he yeah. like had yeah. publicly had the uh, 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 internet, what you know, whatever yeah. um, thing, <clears throat> which you know you could you could literally do that for like thirty bucks or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a really beautiful wedding scene, really. Um, you know that was that was actually really that one lasted pretty long. It was like five ten minutes where they. Um, it was interesting because um, Ava and um, Sarah kind of switched places a little bit because Ava's usually the one that's like very controlled and she plans things ahead and you know she couldn't really figure out what to write in her vows and Sarah's usually the one that kind of just shoots in the hip and she's the one that just broke down this whole you know whole thing on her vow so they kind of just did the opposite of what they normally do so um I think it was was it Gary or or um Nate just told her to speak from the heart one of them said that and um I'm pretty so sure, I'm pretty sure it was just, Gary. Yeah. It was Gary. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um Gary the alien. Um which I'm still not thrilled about that. Um that whatever. Uh I gotta get into that. Uh, I just like Gary being Gary, but okay. Uh, <laughs> well he's still Gary, he's just more. Um he, he's still Gary, I know. But it just anyway, I don't wanna get into that. Um but <clears throat> yeah, she kinda just launches into this um you know, improvised um, vows essentially, which again is really, it really does show um, how Sarah and Ava are sort of growing into each other, um, which, you know, is important to have a relationship because, you know, you, you don't want to be too similar, but you don't want to be too separate either. So, you, yeah. the, the best time is you sort of pick up each other's attributes. You know, if they're good at if they're good attributes, at least, uh, you know, you don't want like a toxic relationship where you pick up each other's bad attributes. But uh, but that's <laughs> that's when it's fun. Oh wait, no. I'm oh sorry. yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you know, Ava, you know, she she's kind of learning how to go with the flow, which is like Sarah's speed, and Sarah's learning to you know actually plan something out, not just you know do whatever. So that was a very um, you know, interesting take on their well, their marriage basically, because um, that's that's literally the beginning of their you know official marriage. Uh, so that was a really good scene. I liked that scene a lot. It, it was um, really heartfelt. You know, they were building that up for a long time for so season three. So um, yeah, oh, you know, because they just first they first started liking each other probably episode eight of season three maybe so yeah. we're looking at literally one two yeah three whole seasons um and then right after they got married like you know what right after they kiss each other that's when the the full-on invasion starts yeah. well they didn't say i do yet oh they didn't no because they had to finish the wedding later oh okay yeah. that's right they didn't hear which you know realistically they could have said it because it takes like two seconds but okay yeah and, um Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you just so, say, do okay. <laughs> so, so at one point, the, the legends have kidnapped a, they kidnap a young bishop. Oh yeah, from right. uh, from from the year twenty, uh, 
2212 um, in Vancouver. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where they film everything. Where they film the show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, they and, and they have him uh, create an antidote that awakens Spooner. That's how how Spooner got to be awoken before the wedding and stuff. Um, but because of that, the, the, the fountain is still isn't restored and it's allowing, um, the pods of the aliens to land on earth. And, um, that's when they decide to get married and everything. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. so yeah, because so, so, uh, young Bishop is at the, at the wedding and everything. That's um, right. Yeah. Okay, I forgot about that. <clears throat> Young Bishop, by the way, who does not have any fashion sense whatsoever. No. Um, old Bishop really, you know, he learned over time how to dress cool and have the dreaded man bun. Um, yeah. Which pretty much at this point just means you're like a douchebag. Sorry. But, like, it just seems like at this point it's like, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no offense. If you got one and you're a good guy, that's okay. You're, you're, you're one of the good ones. I mean, um, it, it, it's a debate which is worse, that or the mullet. <clears throat> I say that because that's very <laughs> classic. <laughs> well, mullets usually like you know, working class, you know, kind of like yeah, yeah, kind of people. Man buns are usually like the, you know, kombucha, kombucha brewing yoga. Yeah. You know, vegan. Like I'm so much. I'm so much better than you, man. You know, I, I live a naturalist lifestyle, man. They probably hate vaccines too. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. So, um, well, there, there's a lot of that in, in the wellness community. They think that everything could be solved by drinking like herbal tea or kombucha or some shit. So, and, and um, growing a man bun. Yeah, that's key. Key component. Yes. Uh, so, um, do you want to take a break really quick, Matt? Sure. Yeah, and we'll talk about the rest of this episode in a second here, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And we are back. So, the spork. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> the spork, man. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> patents for spork-like designs actually date back to 1874. Whoa. Yeah, I thought they were like a mid mid 20th century sort of invention. Yeah, the yeah, me too. The word spork first appeared. In, in a 1909 s- supplement of the Century Dictionary. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, and it's a poor manteau of, you know, spoon and fork, obviously. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that seems like the ra- right around the time when they, you know, invented, quote, milkshakes. And I'm going to say it, sarsaparilla. I said it right. Yes. Um, 
I, I had to like teach myself like a hundred times Sans Barilla, Sans Barilla, Sans Barilla until I was able to, you know, um, do it. <clears throat> so, in, um, so in reality, at this wedding that takes place in 1925, mm-hmm. there could be sporks at it. They could have been if they had cake at that wedding, which I don't think they did. <clears throat> could have used sporks to eat the cake, and then like if they had like another dish that required like a spoon or spooner was there, <laughs> um, they could have used spooner as a spoon. But then that would just kind of make her like dirty and stuff like that. Like literally, just like you know, that makes no sense. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, just take her body and just like scoop up pieces of cake i don't know what i'm saying dude um so so back to the plot (laughs) it's the show (laughs) um so so um so um during the uh wedding bishop arrives on kayla's ship and he opens the pods and but the legends uh the, the legends realize they have this connection to each other Mm -hmm. that so so basically what happens is because the connection that bayrod was talking about in the uh in the um in the mushroom john (laughs) (laughs) that's the name of my new band mushroom john and um, (laughs) they uh um said that they are all connected so what they realize is that they can share each other's powers. Which I don't get, but... <clears throat> right, so, like, have they always had this ability and just didn't know it? Or only because of this particular event? Yeah, or is it a, is it a permanent I mean? thing? Can they do it next season? <laughs> well, it kind of reminds... It kind of remind, It was a little bit... It seemed a little bit reductive because it kind of reminded me of season three with the whole totem thing that they had. Yeah. Where they all had to be connected at the same time in order to, you know, create reality. Which is basically just like Endgame with the whole Infinity Stones, but like kind oh, yeah. of like a, uh, a lesser version of that because the graphics weren't as good and stuff like that. But anyway, um, it kind of reminded me of that where they, they all had to sort of band together. But yeah, I don't know if they always had this ability and they they just didn't know how to use it or something um yeah it's hard to say um i guess we'll see next season if they ever are able to use it again or not yeah so um we we've got the um they realize that they have this connection so they're able to use each other's powers and special abilities to kill the zag the 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 zagarons um, and then Bishop's there by himself, basically, and Mick's eggs end up hatching and they devour Bishop. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Young Bishop <clears throat> is eventually, uh, sent back to, uh, 2212. So, you know, just letting you know that that was tied up um, <laughs> with his memory erased. Right. Yeah. So basically it means that he has to, he has to he do has what, to do what he has. Yeah. <laughs> right. Other, otherwise the timeline is all fucked. And, um, right. Yeah. Um, so Mick ends up, he, he bids farewell to Sarah because he's leaving with Kayla. So this might be the end of Mick for a while. Yeah, one of the original cast members. So, so now we're down to just Sarah as the original cast members go. Sarah, yeah, she's it. That's the yeah. Yep, that was sad because it was just making Sarah for a while. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> if you really think about it, I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, like it'd be interesting though if like <clears throat> if they could start bringing in some of the old ones here and there. Like yeah. for example, like like Jefferson, you know, half a firestorm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've read they're bringing in some new characters. I mean, I know that uh, um, Matt's going to be playing a new character instead of Constantine. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, 
But um, I don't know. If, it would it would be cool, in my opinion, if they brought in some characters from some other Arrowverse shows, shows again, like they did before. But they haven't done that in a while. Yeah, like um, <clears throat> what was it? Um, uh, like the um, Hawk Girl. Um, was it she? Yeah, she was an Arrow for a little bit, wasn't she? No, um, no, she was on uh, Flash before it. But that oh, they, Flash, but they yeah. set her up to be a character. On this, but like I mean, when, when we oh, first okay. when we first started, we haven't had any like almost all the new recruits on this show have been characters created specifically for this show. <laughs> right. Well, what are you referring to? What what characters did they bring from the Arrowverse? I don't remember. Oh, Mick. Um, oh yeah, Mick. That's right. Sarah. Okay. Oh yeah, duh. They were. Um, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, Mick, Sarah. Yeah, Mick, Mick, and Leonard Snart were from the Flash. Te- um, technically, Constantine. Um, That's right, Constantine was an arrow. Yeah, and I um, mean, but but I mean, the, the, all the original people except for Hawkman and Hawk Girl were uh, were characters that had spent time on the other shows prior to joining. You know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's been so long since I watched the original show. Yeah, that's right. Because um, uh, the the original Firestorm, which was um. Um, Martin Stein and um, uh, <clears throat> Robbie. The guy's name. Um, Robbie. What's that? Robbie. Uh, it's like Caitlin's husband. I forgot she yeah. was married at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her husband. Um, yeah. So I mean, but then they did introduce Jefferson on the Flash. So, um, you know, it was like all these characters were originally from other shows. But it would be cool if they did bring in, like, I don't know, like. Because with some of these shows ending, like, I mean, if you brought in, like, Brainy from Supergirl or something, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Or even... Um, like Dreamer or somebody, yeah. Yeah, Dreamer, that was, she, would really, she would really fit in. Or even um, Alex could be kind of like a Sarah-type character, like, a, yeah. you know, like... But, they, well, but, um, they, have, but they have a history, so it's kind of... Um, <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, they, they had like a, a one-night stand. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, you're right about all that. That would be interesting if they could kind of... Or you would get Mia, Queen, because I know that they decided to be assholes and not do a show. Yeah, um, you know, that'd be you cool. Know, called, yeah. You know, which, you know, would have been a cool thing, and the fact that they actually literally set it up, so now that season makes no sense now. Yeah, we, we, <clears> we, anyway, we, um, we will find out something of what happened with Mia. Um, there's going to be a big crossover at the beginning, at, which is in November, I believe, of Flash. Mm-hmm. There's like a, like, I can't remember how many episodes, but a, a bunch of episodes that are all crossover episodes with characters from previous and current Arrowverse shows. Okay. Like, like Black Lightning's going to be on there. Mia Queen's going to be on there. Mm-hmm. Other people, too. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that'll be cool. Um, but anyways, back to this uh, episode here. Um, Zari is mourning Constantine because, you know, he's dead and all. Uh, when <laughs> when he uh, <laughs> when he suddenly <laughs> arrives from hell, where he's damned once more. Um he uh, gives Zari a key and bids her farewell wanting to walk his path alone. So, um, and then after they, um, which, which we don't know what the key's about yet. We'll probably find out in season seven. Um, but, but after they returned, uh, Bishop back to his, uh, his own timeline and wiped his memory, there's a second wave rider appears and it blasts and then destroys the wave the 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 the, uh, <laughs> the the wave rider of the legends stranding them forever it seems like in 1925 <laughs> <clears throat> i knew something was going to happen cuz like oh it's the the first time we ever you know gotten to do something without an incident or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then suddenly, yeah, my my whole thing with that is it's probably going to be something of like we had to do it because we fucked up the timeline so bad again that we we had to stop us from doing it or some shit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know like basically pulling like a, a Barry Allen of like, oh crap, like what do we do yeah. this time? Uh, <laughs> that makes me wonder what's going to happen here. Um, it'll be interesting to see, and I mean the next season is starting 
relatively early, like fast after this season ended. It's just a little over a month. I know. That's weird. Yeah, because it's, it, I believe, October 13th. Uh, the show's moving from Sundays to Wednesdays. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. That, yeah, because um, it's, it's moving to Wednesdays, I believe, along with uh, Batwoman. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Well, I think, I think Wednesdays are going to have, you know, two hours of DC shows with, uh, this and then Batwoman and Tuesdays there's I guess going to have uh, it's going to have The Flash um, and probably for a little bit Stargirl yeah but yeah we're, we're running out of uh, shows on there you know we don't have as many as we used to anymore <laughs> so because some of them are ending yeah because Black Lightning ended um, which I still need to catch up on I'm like three seasons behind on that show um, yeah. so the, uh, um, yeah, that ended and, uh, and, uh, Supergirl's ending soon. Yeah. And then Superman and Lois isn't coming back until like mid season until sometime in early, uh, 2022. So, oh, really? yeah. So that'll be interesting. So did I miss anything on this episode that you wanted to bring up, Matt? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I think, I mean, I think it just like like more of like character development details but not so much what actually happened yeah because i remember i just remember now thinking about because he mentioned zari that um one of the main things in this episode was she was like she was kind of more angry with john that was like her way of grieving like she didn't even want to talk to the mushroom yeah because she was he was like he's a selfish asshole you know you know like i mean there's there's a lot of times where i don't want to talk to the mushroom either you know so yeah i know it's hard you know it's (laughs) you know it's a hard mushroom i don't know what that means (laughs) (laughs) it's a hard 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 life to follow where you have to talk to a mushroom um right that's that's another band name right there hard mushroom yeah i i uh I personally, I've never eaten a mushroom in my life. That's true. Yeah, I never have. I know. And uh, that's because my grandma, when I was a little kid, told me a story about her sister dying from a poisonous mushroom. And even though I know that I'm not going to get like a poisonous mushroom from Walmart or something, I'm still never going to eat one. So, (laughs) you know, so... You don't really need to. It's not no. like it's not like they provide that much. Yeah, <clears throat> nutrition. I, I guess they're high in zinc, but you can get zinc in pretty much almost anything else, really. So I think um, there's I think there's some zinc in my sink, so I just lick my sink. Oh, gross! <laughs> just joking. <laughs> it's like the dirtiest place in like the house is the sink. I know. Like, they would say that the kitchen sink actually might be worse than like your bathroom. Like, yeah. it's just, it's like, probably, probably be be- better off licking the toilet bowl then. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, or some zinc in there, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh boy, <laughs> uh, zinc in the sink, and um, yep, that's another band name right there. Yeah. Zinc. In, uh, we're gonna see a good good show tonight. We got a stink in the sink, followed by hard mushroom, and then mushroom John. Yep. Yep. And then Mushroom Head's going to show up. Anyway, so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to play a secret show. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, did you want to take another quick break, Matt? Or do you want to just, or is there anything else you want to say? Or should we just wrap it up? I think we can wrap it up. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know if there's much left in the episode. No, there isn't much. I think we pretty much covered everything. Uh, this was a, I mean, it was an event, eventful episode, but not a, like, majorly eventful one. It was a typical season finale. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take one break here today, folks. Um, and, uh, you know, and, but and anything else on your mind, Matt, anything you've been watching or anything you want to recommend to people? Um, you know, I was thinking about it and I forgot what I was been watching something that was really good. <sighs> Shoot. I know, you know, I don't even remember what it was. It was, um, definitely was not Mortal Kombat. It's, um, Started watching that recently. Did not, did not like it very much. Um, you know what it was? I don't know now, but I was watching um, Cinderella on Amazon Prime. Yeah, 
that was pretty decent. Not, not as good as I thought it would be, but it was it was okay. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I'll give it another watch. You know, when I could turn up the TV a little bit louder because uh, I was watching it kind of late at night last night. Yeah. So, um, with um, that, that was pretty cool. Um, but man, I, I I was watching something really cool and I can't even. Remember. Maybe next episode I'll be able to remember it. But, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I've I've I, I've said something about this before, but I really like. Only Murders in the Building, which is a Hulu show that I think everybody should watch, starring Steve Martin, uh, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. It's a uh, it's a really good show about these podcast obsessed uh, or true crime podcast obsessed people that live in this New York building. Who uh, there's a they realize they all realize they don't know each other, but then they realize that there's a murder happening in the building. They all realize they're fans of the same podcasts. And uh, <laughs> decide to start their own podcast and try to serve this, um, solve this murder in their building. It's it's hilarious, you know. So highly recommend it. I uh, so check it out. Yeah, I think it. I think anybody would enjoy it. It's nice, nice short half hour episodes. <clears throat> so, but it's you know it's 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 really it, it's funny, but it's twisty and turny, and it's pretty cool. Um, Still have no idea. I still have no idea who killed anybody. So it's uh, <laughs> uh, every week. I think I know who it is, and then they basically burst that bubble the next week. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep. I think they're doing that on purpose. There's there's so many red herrings in the show that it's like ridiculous. So um, the um, yeah, that's only murders in the building on uh, Hulu. Um, yeah, the uh, I don't know. I watched that and. Uh, Finally got around to watching Shazam, finishing that from a, oh, that's that's a, a good couple, one. couple years ago. That was fun. Yeah, I watched that the other night, um, last weekend. Yeah, had had only seen part of it before and then fell asleep, and it was nothing to do with the movie, just me being tired. And uh, <laughs> so I fig- finally finished it like a year later, and um, <laughs> <laughs> that was, was pretty good. Highly recommended. If you like the humor of uh, Legends and stuff, I think you'll like that. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, really interesting. And they're, they're making a sequel to that too. So yeah, that's coming out sometime soon. And if you and, and and another thing to recommend, if you like Zachary Levi, who stars in that, highly recommend Chuck. Check out the TV show Chuck mm-hmm. that he starred in. One of the best uh, underrated uh, comedy dramas that's ever been on TV. Um, yeah, and check out our interview with. Uh, um, Whoa, I just blanked on the dude's name <laughs> with a guy who played Big Mike on there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad, dude. Mark. Um, <laughs> Mark. Um, his name's Mark. I know that much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, ch- check check that out, interview out on a previous episode that we did. Um, so uh, what? Uh, anything else, Matt, before we go now? No, just... Um... You know, like you say, you know, um, be kind. <laughs> Rewind. Um, wear a mask. Check out our Facebook group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> check out our tea public. Check out all two real two dot com for any other links to any of our good stuff. Um, but, you know, wear a condom. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.